Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I have a, uh, this is another episode of, uh, mailbag, mailbox, mail, whatever. So, yeah, I have another package and this one says YouTube. So I know exactly what this is from. This is, uh, IC Station. Uh, they had sent me some more goodies, uh, for this month. So I just want to do a quick opening and I'll go through and maybe I'll play around with it a little bit. Uh, if it doesn't take too much time. So, yeah, let's just cut this open and spill the contents. Cut this open, and I can't remember exactly what I ordered. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> okay, so that is what I ordered, apparently. Ah, so two modules. Uh, well, a module and a toy, I guess you could say. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Neat little uh, barcode there. Uh, well, not barcode. Uh, QR code. Uh, Sanwu. Uh, interesting. So this is a, I believe it's a Bluetooth Class D uh, amplifier. Uh, oh, let's let's uh, give it a slice open. So let's see. So we have uh, two. I'm guessing those are speaker. Yep, left and right. This is actually very good quality. I mean, look how thick the PCB is. Has a good weight to it, especially because of the magnetics. So yeah, left and right, uh, positive and negative. So these are the two speaker outputs. A VCC ground, and it has a headphone jack input, as well as a, a Bluetooth antenna. So this will receive Bluetooth, but also accept line in, which is really cool. So I have a couple of ideas for this. I have a uh, Bose speaker that I have a, a little dinky, like uh, 10 watt per channel amplifier in right now. And it's okay. But if I substitute it with this guy, all I have to do is solder some headers because the way I have it right now, everything just plugs in. So just solder some headers and I can have uh, AV in or, uh, well, audio in or Bluetooth. So this is pretty cool. I believe this runs from, um, don't quote me on this, I'll, I'll show you guys in a second the uh, the web page. But I believe this goes from like 9 to 12 volts. Uh well, let's stop uh, theorizing and let's uh, actually pull up the web page and we'll go through this real quick. Okay, so we are on IC Station's website right now. And this is a module that I, uh, I had asked them for. Let's get a bit of a close-up. So yeah, this guy is only uh, originally 10 bucks, but for the next uh, 21 hours, hopefully if I get the post is quick enough, uh, 8 bucks for essentially a complete... Class D at two times 30 watts, so definitely not a pushover. It uses a TPA 3118. Uh, and yeah, this is actually pretty snazzy. So yeah, we can just get in there. They have a nice picture on how to wire everything up. So yeah, um, we have LED indicator for connection status, our uh, audio input, Bluetooth antenna, went all over all that, yeah, speaker inputs and power, and that's it. That's all you really need for this guy. So, yeah, uh, power range 8 to 26 volts. So currently the speaker that I'm thinking of putting this in uh, has a 12 volt adapter. So this is perfect. Uh, 12 volts at uh, 2 amps, so 24 watts. So obviously that's not going to hit the uh, 30 watt output, but I really don't need it to. So the thing about speakers is to fill a relatively small apartment room like mine, 10 watts is plenty enough. So... I'm really not going to need the whole 30 watts per channel. So good thing about this is it, it'll it work off of 4, 6, and 8 ohms, so it's pretty flexible. The amp that I have right now technically only works at 4 ohms, uh, but I believe I'm driving it with an 8 ohm speaker. Uh, so it's not really optimal, and there are some problems because of that. Um, I can tell it's kind of straining a bit. Anyway, yeah, standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, it'll automatically pair uh, once you turn it on. Uh, all you have to do is uh, connect to the the Bluetooth um, device that's named X, uh, X Special Special Audio. Uh, anyway, yeah, so this is a uh, pretty cool. So I'll definitely have a, a separate video on me doing that. And uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, I have a uh, the actual numbers for these modules. So this is the eighty four fifty six Star One. And if you just go on IC Station's website, I'll have links in the uh, down below as well. But if you go onto the uh, their website, 
you can just type this in quickly and it'll take you right to the uh, the product uh, link so yeah anyway that's the first item so let's get on to the second okay and this guy is the second item it's a USB message not massage a massage fan that that sounds really painful anyway USB message fan with switch so um, my understanding when I was reading the site is ooh, that'd be cool if it does a clock that'd be really neat uh, yeah so this is programmable I'm guessing you I don't know if it's through USB that'd be really cool but I'm not expecting that uh, given the price, but I'm guessing you press this button you can go through the different modes maybe program a message Yeah, so let me uh, show you guys the website So yeah, uh, this guy is uh, product number 9559 star one and as you can see originally five bucks, which that's pretty cheap But uh, it's on sale for four bucks uh, for the next three days about so yeah, um, this is a one of those POB devices, and I built one of these before, um, but obviously much larger, much louder. Um, so this will be neat to see how exactly they handle uh, everything um, hardware-wise or rotating. I'm interested. I'm going to power it up, play around with it in this video probably, and then we'll see... Uh, what exactly the in innards, hopefully non-destructively, <laughs> how exactly it works. Yeah, it's uh, listed as USB fan, the word fan, yeah, USB flash, sorry. I cannot read today. Uh, that is out of shot anyway. <laughs> so yeah, uh, power supply, USB, so I can uh, power this off of a phone power brick or a USB uh, battery, uh, one of those battery backups. So yeah, um, I got the green color because uh, green slash blue are my favorite colors and I just picked green because it would be bright. Uh, yeah, so you can see here, it's literally just one of these fans. Uh, so I, it'll literally be cool. Get get it? Uh, okay, I, I, I'll stop making puns. Anyway, yeah, so uh, let's open this guy up and uh, give it a play. Okay. Let's see, does this say? Uh, I cannot read any of this. <laughs> I can only read 200 milliamps, so that's going to be the uh, current draw. There, there, there. Okay, yeah, 200 milliamps is uh, the current draw. It says it works USB 1.1, 2.0, 3.0. That's probably just drawing power. I don't think you actually program this through USB. It's probably the switch on the side. So, yeah, I can't read any more of that. So, let's just get... Oh, there is English... Uh, Covered by the stickers. Oh well, not necessary. I might peel this off later and uh, and read it. Hopefully, there's some more uh, funny translation. <laughs> so always enjoy that. Yeah. So let's pull it out. So so far, eh, the actual the plastic's actually really good. This feels like I could drive a truck over it, and it wouldn't work necessarily, but it would be mechanically sound. Ah, yeah. Okay, I see. That's just one of those click on off power. Uh, buttons, huh interesting. There's a USB micro. So I I wonder there must be some kind of software um, That you plug this in and somehow you can power you can probably program it through that that's fascinating So I, I was assuming that like the guts were in this section and It was sending the data through here and I can kind of see some brushes on the underside you can just barely see so that's sending power obviously but all the uh, the brains are in this section here and you can see the strip of 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 or 12 uh, I lost count anyway probably about 12 LEDs and it's interesting it's like uh, this laminated plastic it's uh, pretty thin and it's on this flex board which is really interesting that they went that route it'd be cheap to manufacture uh, and yeah, this is fascinating. So I kind of want to power this up right now and see what it does. There is a USB port. Well, there's two. So yeah, let's get this, uh, going. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. I have no idea what that says. Uh, let me turn it kind of right. Oh, oh, it says I love you. Oh, I love you guys too. <laughs> okay, so I assume that that's, uh, Chinese for I love you and English, obviously. So yeah, this is actually really stable. Um, I, mean, I can kind of wiggle it around, but you can see there's a little bit of jitter, but it's uh, pretty good, I gotta say. I'm kind of blown on it with my breath while it's running, and it's 
jittering back and forth a little bit, but there must be some kind of feedback sensor or the internal clock is pretty accurate because uh, I'm not really noticing that much uh, jitter there. Maybe there is a feedback so it knows where the start is. But yeah, that's pretty bright. I can turn off the lights and maybe focus in on that sort of. It looks sort of washed out in this image because, well, camera phones and white flickery lights generally don't mix together that well, but yeah. Uh, pretty good. I can get kind of close in there. Yeah, there we go. You guys can see how it's kind of uh, uh, like radial arcs uh, form each of the, the portions of the text. So yeah, that's uh, fascinating. And it actually is cooling me, <laughs> which is kind of nice because it's kind of warm in my room right now. Anyway, I'm going to plug this into the computer with a uh, USB micro cable, I have to find one, and see what happens. Maybe there's a program that it loads where you can edit the text because that would be really cool because uh, I have a few ideas of what I could use this for. That'd be really neat. I saw on the uh, manual as a picture of a clock. If you can get into that clock mode, this would be an awesome clock. So uh, yeah, before I get too excited, let me find a uh, micro cord. Okay, so I'm, I'm rather sad. I uh, plugged it into the computer and I get uh, the USB device is not recognized error, uh, which means usually something's wrong, like electronically wrong with the uh, device. And so I opened it up. The top is just pretty much uh, some plastic pins and it's friction fit, so you just get a pocket knife in there and you can carefully lever it off. And you can see there's a, a wire and a slight gap here. And that's how, so there, there's the outer ring and then the inner one. So it momentarily loses power, I guess, and that's how it detects that um, this is like the starting position. So it knows where to start the line. And there's some, uh, what appears to be some kind of grease or lubricant on there. So the uh, springs slide easily on it. So yeah, um, basically we have like a microprocessor, uh, a serial EEPROM, and we have the... A USB socket here and that's really all that there is and then just the LEDs uh, and there's lots of test pads but uh, as I can't get it to actually enumerate I don't really know what what I could do honestly uh, I'm kind of a little bit disappointed I might go over those solder pads on the USB port uh, because obviously power wise everything works when it's just plugged in um, to USB for power but as soon as I plug this head part in uh, it no longer, you know, it doesn't even show up as a USB device. Okay, so I looked up a little bit more information, and this little chip here is an Atmel chip. It's a AT24C16, and this is a I squared C. Looks like an I squared C uh, serial EEPROM, and it's really weird because you can see some of the data lines from the USB port going directly to the pins in that chip. And so what this is telling me is uh, this programming header isn't standard USB. This is probably made for hooking up to a test jig with um, just an I2C program or something like that. Uh, so that would explain why when I plug in USB into this part, it uh, the computer freaks out because it's not even wired correctly. I'm surprised it didn't damage anything on this board. But yeah, so that tells me I'm going to actually have to program this chip uh, like using a, an external microprocessor. Okay, so this is my uh, Bose sound dock. This is a first gen. The amplifier was uh, toasted on it, either the DSP or the amplifier. Didn't work either way. Um, yeah, it used an annoying uh, bipolar power supply. So I just decided to change it for a Class T amplifier. So this is the module that I got from my C station. So this is a semi review of this. So it works awesome. It has a uh, you know a, a funny uh, person talking when it first boots up, uh, saying you know Bluetooth devices connected or whatever. Anyway, that that's fine. It's a little bit odd, but I can I can live with that. One thing I can't live with. So it has this auxiliary input, and then it also works off Bluetooth. So I thought, oh great, I can just like use one or the other, and that would be fine. Uh, that's not exactly what happened. So if Bluetooth is already connected, uh, what this chip does is it sends a uh, unmute signal to the amplifier and essentially turns the amplifier on. 
So if the Bluetooth is connected and I'm inputting auxiliary audio, it'll play both simultaneously, but it'll uh, make the Bluetooth audio lesser in volume. It'll make it softer. Uh, but as soon as I disconnect the Bluetooth, the auxiliary turns off as well, which is useless because there are instances where I just want to use auxiliary and no Bluetooth, but this won't allow that. So I hopefully can get a close shot. There is a uh, single transistor. It's actually underneath this capacitor. I wish I could show it, but uh, there's a resistor, uh, a small pad. Uh, so all I had to do is remove the resistor. I uh, kept it uh, near the, the, the transistor. I'll get high resolution pictures later. And uh, so I traced it out with a multimeter and that actually went to the shutdown pin, uh, which is a fifth pin on the bottom on this uh, TPA, this uh, Class D amplifier. So if I permanently tied that uh, low, then that would force the amplifier always to be on. But as soon as I'd plug in power, the issue I was having was I was getting a really loud click and a pop from all of a sudden the, the power surging and I was worried that would damage the speakers and it was really annoying, honestly. So what I ended up doing was I took a 220 uh, microfarad capacitor and a 100 uh, kilo ohm resistor and I hooked that up to the five volt regulator here that supplies the uh, logic side, the Bluetooth. And so what this does is when it first, uh, when you first plug it in and it powers on, it slowly charges this capacitor. Once this capacitor gets to a certain voltage, um, it essentially acts as this chip, so it, it unmutes the amplifier. And um, so I ended up using the, um, there's a, tran a transistor in between uh, the Bluetooth chip and this chip, so it actually inverts the signal. So when this voltage uh, gets high enough, uh, close to 5 volts, it turns on the transistor, which then shorts the, uh, the mute pin on this amplifier chip to ground, thus turning it on. Uh, so... I'm probably going to either draw a picture or maybe uh, try to move carefully move these components and uh, get a better uh, shot of this. But yeah, this is a modification I need to do so that I could use blue only Bluetooth or only auxiliary or both. Uh, but without doing this mod, you can only use auxiliary when a Bluetooth device is connected and synced, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of having this or this. Yeah, I can do a quick demo for you guys. I have a DC input here. I have a 12 volt connector. And... The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. So you can see it's ready to pair. Uh, so under normal conditions, music would actually play while that prompt was going if it was injected via auxiliary. But as soon as that voiceover stopped, the music would cut and it would refuse to play. But here I have my uh, little Sansa player. You can uh, hear, hopefully I don't get a copyright claim on this, but anyway, you can hear that music is playing um, even though the Bluetooth light is flashing and it's not synchronized properly. And likewise, I have a uh, Bluetooth device here. I can just uh, turn on Bluetooth. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. You can hear it's uh, very fun. <laughs> I don't, the accent's kind of cute, I'm not going to lie. But anyway, uh, yeah, so it's uh, connected successfully and Bluetooth audio is working as well. And if I turn on um, both Bluetooth and this, I can get both to play simultaneously and get double the copyright strikes. Anyway, hopefully uh, none of this gets flagged. It's real okay. I'm I'm gonna go on a quick little rant. So I understand. Uh, the Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Okay, okay, I get it. So I, I understand the whole purpose of, uh, of the uh, copyright um, uh, strike method and whatnot that YouTube employs. Um, however, I would think that in this case, because it's not even about the audio, it's about me debugging an audio system, it really shouldn't matter because I'm just using it for the purposes of the fact that it is audio. I mean... It's not like I'm trying to copy the entire song and distribute it. So I really never understood why on a couple of my old videos where I'm testing out an amplifier, I've got copyright strike claims. 
against me, even though I played like maybe 40, 45 uh, seconds of a song, but the song was irrelevant. So yeah, yeah, I understand I could find royalty free music, but it really shouldn't matter in that case. It's almost a little childish, I think, uh, to throw a temper tantrum that I'm using someone's music when that's not even the whole point of the video. It's actually only a small point. Anyway, enough rambling. So I'm happy with this modification. I'm going to shove this board into the sound cavity, close it up, and then I will use this uh, as a both a Bluetooth speaker as well as uh, a auxiliary, auxiliary line in. Okay, so just a quick little review. So I have uh, one of my videos playing so I don't get a copyright strike. And um, I have everything uh, stuffed into this amplifier, or the speaker cabinet rather. And so right now I'm using the audio input. And I can turn up the volume, it sounds very good. Um, well, this speaker cabinet, the speakers and the acoustic engineering that went into it already sound good, but there's uh, absolutely no distortion. I can just pause this. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, background hiss. Um, that's kind of normal for a lot of speakers tend to have that. That's actually probably why they implemented the mute function is so that if nothing was connected to Bluetooth that it would shut off. And uh, yeah, yeah, everything works. Uh, this is a pretty good uh, deal in terms of getting both Bluetooth ex as well as auxiliary input. Um, if you want to use the auxiliary input, I would suggest doing the modification that I did. Uh, otherwise, you would always have to have a Bluetooth device connected in order to even use the auxiliary. But if you just want to use this amplifier for Bluetooth, there's no modification that you need to make in that case. It'll work perfectly with just Bluetooth. Yeah, and given the price of this, uh, yeah, definitely uh, better quality. The uh, the circuit board itself, the construction, the parts, uh, great quality. I can I can already tell just by feeling in my hands. Uh, it's uh, well designed in terms in terms of like the uh, the PCB thickness and the uh, copper layer thickness in terms of uh, heat dissipation because for Class D amplifiers it's very important um, because they do generate quite a well less heat than a uh, like a classical Class AB amplifier but they still do get pretty warm and for how small they are they still have to dissipate that heat so all in all it sounds really really awesome and uh, yeah so you can maybe get a, a sense of um, how it sounds here. Yeah, just playing a video off my uh, projector. So yeah, all in all, that's pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are interested in picking this guy up, I'll have uh, links down below. And uh, once again, thanks for IC Station for sending this in for me uh, to review and tinker around with. I think that makes this speaker a lot more useful than it was before with the uh, little dinky amp because now I can use both Bluetooth as well as wired connections. Speaker. Anyway, thank you guys for uh, listening to me ramble. I'll have uh, more details on uh, this bodge circuit that I put in there. I'll probably tidy it up eventually. Anyway, it works for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.